Let's move on to our main event, shall yes, we? We're super excited about this. The you, city. you want me to talk about that while you're you, getting it ready? While I'm getting ready, you can tell them what we found. Okay, so the sous vide method. Our group has been talking, at the, let me even back up. The number one thing that everyone wants to know is, can we make this faster than a year? Yes, because number one question. my patience is tried. I hate having to put the lid on the jar and I hate having to wait for a whole year to get my extract. Well, and if you think about it, how many things do we really wait an entire year before we get to enjoy it? Exactly. Not a lot of things. Not a lot of things. <laughs> so is there a way to sort of speed it along? And there's been a lot of commentary in our group about the sous vide. There's been commentary about the Instapot. We keep referring to Amy DeLong Main. She's got a group called Instapot 101 for beginners. There's like 700,000 members there. A huge group. So if you have questions, if we get Instapot questions, that group is a great resource if you haven't already joined. And, She's and a great resource. Amy's wonderful but uh, we uh, wanted to try the sous vide there's lots of debate as to what you should use whether it's mm -hmm. a sous vide and instapot there's lots of concerns out there about heating a jar that has alcohol in it or putting a jar under pressure that has alcohol in it we don't want to we're not the, the pros on any of that and so but we are sort of experimenting with our group members we decided that the sous vide would be a great place to begin given the uh, Paul Gingrich recommendation uh, we followed it and we like the sous vide uh, as a very first experiment for us so but if you have an instapot um, go on over to Amy's group um, you can learn some more things over you can there. learn some more things over there yeah. so there's a lot there that we don't know but uh, we did try the sous vide with some success and we're going to share that here so as it relates to the sous vide so the first thing we had to do was buy a sous vide we we did not know where to go so we got online as, as you know call it newbies right we researched a bunch of sous vides they can be really expensive yeah. I mean, uh, you know, hundreds, hundreds. of dollars um, all the way, you know, I mean, they're really, really expensive for like the, the big, nice sort of sous vides. And they're also really cheap. Um, you know, we found several. There was one for like $30, $40 on sale. This one was sort of a middle of the road, $100 sous vide. We gave it a try. We liked it. Uh, this is called the uh, Anova. Um, I'm sure you can find it online, but we had a really good first experience with this sous vide. It was right around $100. Mm -hmm. So for what we were going to try to do, uh, that one made sense for us, right? So you unpack your sous vide, you get it out, and what do you do? Well, you, this is what it looks like. So the sous vide unit looks just like this. It's so simple. There's a, there's a plug, right? <laughs> Easy. There's a digital face on the top, and up here you type in your time and you type in the temperature that you want to circulate the water. And for those of you that know about, um, excuse me, that know about a sous vide, so what it does is it simply heats and circulates the water around your jars or whatever it is that you're putting inside the, the container that has the water in it. And so it's a nice digital screen. You put in your temperature, you put in your time. There's a clamp that's on the back. So the clamp rests right on the edge of your bottle or of your uh, cooking uh, uh, pot. <laughs> Sometimes these words, like pot, <laughs> that's a tough one. It is a pot, <laughs> it's just a three letter word. <laughs> so sometimes, uh, so you've got the clamp to hook it onto the side of your pot um, and it's just that simple, you put it in. The, the thing that we notice though, and that's really important, maybe we'll, well get to it, that. Even the way it works is it, all it does is it pulls in the water and heats it. So this, there's a bottom hole here, pulls through and it heats heats the water and then it comes out the top and so there's just a circulation of water the whole time and it'll actually tell you on the top what is your current temperature so you know that oftentimes when I have to refill after it's evaporated my temperature will go down and so I know oh let's keep an eye on that to see uh, where my temperature is so let's just go through it let's go through it so, okay, so we're going to go just... through it as if we're making uh, the sous vide method extract with you for the first time so I'm going to back up for this segment at the beginning of our show today, we began with making these uh, extracts right here. So as you'll recall, this is a half Madagascar, half Ecuadorian in white rum. We just put these in 10, 15, 20 minutes ago yep. in these little jars. We use the small jars because they'll fit inside of our pot and they can be fully submerged. And we just closed the lid on these. So these are the yep. ones we're going to begin with. So Okay, so what you need is you need um, a big pot. <laughs> um, and the jars have to be completely submerged so that's why we have the little ones um i know like a water bath canning pot would probably be a good idea because it's much taller so you could probably put um, quart sized jars in there if you want to um, this was just easy to get and i wanted to try a lot of different little small samples 
So I thought, I'm gonna do a lot of these eight ounces and try some new things that I haven't tried before because it's going to be a quick try here. We're gonna do it with the sous vide. So our logic in our case was small bottles so we could get multiple samples and we could fit multiple jars yep. inside the pot. And so, so we just put like, them in. I, I could fit um, six of them in here. So we had and six then, different flavors. And in fact, we can put you could probably put in the this new particular pot, yeah. there was enough for eight. Mm -hmm. So one of the decisions you'll want to make is, are you making just one flavor? If so, maybe you want a bigger jar and you'll need a deeper pot. Yeah. Or are you making multiple flavors? And if so, you can have multiple little jars and maybe a more shallow pot that's a little bit wider. Which is what I did. Which is what we did to yeah. be able to make multiple samples. Yep. And yep. so the next step is just to fill, I fill it right up to the rim just all the way, as much as I can get in here, with, I fill it all the way to the top because that will be the less I have to keep filling. And, and, and we completely evaporate. submerge all the jars. That this was a question, do we fill it? Completely submerged. So if you go just to the top, do you leave the lids out? That no, was a question. Completely submerged. Completely submerged. Yep. So we want all of it underwater so the heat is applied equally mm -hmm. to the whole jar. To the whole jar, yep. Yep. So um, the temperature that we're going to set this is 135. And this is, we're getting this off of um, Paul Gingrich's uh, recipe that he shares on our, um, on our website. So I'm going to put 135 for my target temperature. And then 96 hours is how long it goes. So we just started it and filled it all the way to the top. And I thought, wow, this is kind of easy. And there's just a, a slight hum to it. Yeah. It's not annoying. It's not loud, but there's just this like real quiet hum. I came home from work and I didn't know that she had started it. And uh, I walked in and I'm like, what is, I thought my ears were ringing. I didn't even say anything for like the first couple hours because there was like this little hum in the background and that's just the sous vide doing its job. Yep. It became kind of comforting. In fact, the hum went away once and oh, we, yeah. we learned a lesson, right? We were actually glad we had the hum because all of a sudden the hum was absent and we had yeah. to figure out what happened. So do you want to talk about well, that? Well, when we woke up one morning, uh, we didn't hear it. And then we checked on it and my temperature was 88 degrees and it was because my water went below my minimum level. And so overnight it had evaporated. And so you'll want to make sure that you fill it all the way to the top before you go to bed. <laughs> yes, because it will evaporate. It does evaporate. And there's a line here, it says max and it says min. And so one of the tricks when you use your pot, this pot is a little bit shallow and it's about an inch below the max level. And so you, you're going to want to find a pot that is high enough to at least be at the max level of the sous vide. And that'll just give you that much more, more wiggle time. room. So if it evaporates, you can keep an eye on it, refill it as the water's evaporating. Yep. Because as soon as it gets below that min, it doesn't want to burn the engine and it just shuts down. And yeah, that's what happened to us. it just shuts off and then you have to start over. So we actually probably did it a little bit longer than 96 hours because uh, our temperature um, dropped. Um, and I don't know how long overnight. It was about 24 hours into it, a little more, uh, that it shut off and it was down for maybe a few hours. Yeah. So it was still warm in the morning, but it was definitely cooler. And so that was a problem. So we just added a little more time. We just it. added more water and added more time. Yep. Right? And that's yep. what we did. Now there was a question here. Did your seals hold up under the heat? Completely. No problems. Now we, we want to make sure that you really tighten them tight. Um, Paul actually suggests that you turn them over after you do that and let them sit for a while just to make sure that there's a seal and there's no leakage. I didn't do that. I just made sure they were tight and I didn't have any problems. They were wonderful. So that was Paul Gingrich, the guy who wrote the recipe yeah. that recommended that. Not me though. I would love to take credit for that. <laughs> um, so I've never met a Paul I didn't like. Exactly. <laughs> and so, so like the extracts that we just barely made, so we've just sealed them. And so if we were following Paul's recommendation, we'd put them upside down on a paper towel and we would just make sure that we're not getting any leaking before we put it inside the sous vide, mm -hmm. right? Which is a great tip by Paul. Thanks for sharing that, great question. Uh, you can actually get a plastic container specifically made for the sous vide technology, which is much yes, bigger and wider than a pot. Yep. It also comes with a lid that has slots for the sous vide unit. Yep. Wonderful. You Thank you. You can do that. Thank you very much for that comment. Um, would extra time in the sous vide ever damage the extract? That is a question that was asked on our blog mm -hmm. that we would love Paul's feedback on that. We only went for the 96, well, plus a few more hours. Um, I think the common of thinking is that if, if it's mostly ready in 96 hours, would it be fully ready if I just did the sous vide for like 
150 or 200 hours. Paul recommends that after you're done at 96 hours, that you still put the extract on the shelf for another three months, correct? Well, especially the bourbon. Yes. That's what he means. Like the vodka um, can be ready a lot sooner, but the bourbon um, takes a little bit longer. And, you know, bourbon takes longer when we just do it the normal way without the sous vide. It can take up to 18 months, sometimes two years, because just, you know, bourbon can be such a strong spirit. Yep. And so um, we don't know the answer to that question. We'd encourage you to give it a try and please post and share and we'll update the blog as we get more information from you guys. So we put the extracts in, you add the water, you cover them up, you plug it in, put in the temperature, put in the time, and then you wait. And it's funny how when you're in the extract making world, we're like, this thing goes for 96 hours. We're like, that's no time at all because it it's not a year. Everything's relative. And it was so fun taking it out. I mean, look how dark these are. Do you want to, I don't know, yes. maybe it's all up a little bit closer, but this is the, um, this is the one that we did last show. See how dark, now this is the uh, Gingrich, so this is the one with Maker's Mark bourbon, and look at how dark and rich that is. Let's, let me hold one up that has a vodka. Okay, here's our Svedka vodka. This is the Svedka vodka, was this with Madagascar? Yes. So this is a clear, this is a vodka, and look at how dark that is after 96 hours, well in our case 100 plus hours in the sous vide. Absolutely and, and wonderful. And we did use one ounce of beans to eight ounces of uh, spirits. Yep, in every one of these, one ounce of beans. So there's no double fold in any of this. This was all single fold, one ounce to eight ounce. Lots of different alcohols, lots of different beans, yep. right? So should we hold it up? In fact, let's do a quick comparison. Well, this this is, is interesting. This is from our last show that we did. Um, and look how much it has already uh, changed colors. You, it's very, it's still amber. Um, Hold it up to the light there so you can see. You can see that it is already well on its way and that was what, five weeks ago about? Uh-huh, and that was a vodka, right? Yep. And so again, when you compare this with whole beans to uh, a sous vide, and you can see the difference there, um, it's amazing. There's just no question the sous vide expedites the process yeah. and you get extraction happening at a faster rate. So um, when we first learned about um, Paul Gingrich's um, sous vide method, we, we tried out all these different kinds from so many of our group members. But at the time we did not have a sous vide. So all we did was, is we just put the beans in, we put the maker's mark and we did it the old fashioned way. So we thought it would be fun to try, let's see, when did we start this? The 31st of January. So about six months old. Uh, and these were whole beans? These, um, nope, these no, were cut. cut. These were cut. And it's with Maker's Mark bourbon and uh, Madagascar beans. So we also have the same thing here that we just did in the sous vide. And then we have the one that we did the old fashioned way from January. And yeah. we're gonna taste test it and just kind of see the difference. Yep, now Debbie asked a great question. Debbie, could you use the sous vide method starting later in the cycle, like several months old? That's a great question. I and don't what, see why not. I think we even try that. Yeah. I think what we'll do is we'll grab one of our extracts that is maybe a few months old. We'll put it in and we'll review that maybe in our next show uh, and, and see how that turns out. So again, we have the old fashioned uh, way of just doing what Paul Gingrich had recommended with uh, Madagascar beans and Maker's Mark. This is about a six and a half month old extract. We haven't opened it um, or tasted it. No, we haven't. And so if, uh, for those of you that have been part of our group for a long time, you will remember that cold winter day, <laughs> January 31st, when we put these beans in this bottle and we talked about the Gingrich. And so let's smell it. It's still, though there is a lot of vanilla, after six months in a Maker's Mark bourbon. It's quite bourbon -y. There's a lot of bourbon still yeah. in this six month old mm -hmm. extract, right? Now, if you smell this one. Now, is this, this is the Gingrich here? Smell the difference. Okay, so this. There is a difference. This is the Gingrich. This one's only five days old using the sous vide. Oh my gosh. Well, there's kind of, it's, a, it's like a dark, kind of a smoky smell. Mm -hmm. um, I don't get the booze as much, but, but it's, it's definitely there. still there, but more mm -hmm. of a smoky smell. Yeah. Um, but you're already getting a vanilla that's coming through. And I think that the vanilla is more pronounced uh, than the booze, but you're, you're still definitely, there's a little bit of booze in that, which yeah. is interesting. So we're gonna taste test it. So we are, let's see, do you wanna just pour just a titch of that into this yep. one? So you'll remember our taste testing method? It's just a tablespoon of whole milk. Um, and then a couple drops 
of your um, your vanilla and I'm just gonna eyeball this and so uh, we call this the Shannon Adams taste test method there's uh, within our website in the extract making section there's a whole section that says how do you I know that my extract is finished you taste test it you can do it with whipped cream you can do it with milk mm -hmm. we're doing it with milk here uh, so we're gonna stir it all up so we got a lot of the oils from those beans in the yeah, first one look at that so the, the fat within the melt kind of helps to spread out the flavor compounds of the vanilla. And then uh, you let it sit for about 30 seconds after you stir it around. And then we'll take a little taste and we'll see how the sous vide Gingrich compares with the non sous vide Gingrich. And we'll see how it tastes. So to Paul Gingrich and to his sous vide method, let's taste this for the first yeah. time. And let's see if we get more, really what I'm looking for is more vanilla than bourbon. Yes. Okay. So it's definitely sweet. There's definitely vanilla, mm -hmm. but I don't know that it's fully done yet, which is why Paul probably recommends that you let it sit for about 90 days afterwards. So it's definitely sweet. Mm -hmm. The vanilla definitely comes through more than, like if we were to take this one five days from now and pour it in, all I would taste was white rum. Yeah. And so I'm definitely getting more vanilla, but it's, I don't know that it's entirely finished yet. No. We would say no. So this is, you're, you're watching us respond live here. This is our first taste. Yep. This so it's good, it's close, but it's not entirely finished yet, which is really interesting, right? So this is the original one that we did the old fashioned way that was started in January. So I'm expecting to taste a lot of booze in this one, maybe even more than the other. Uh-huh. Is that? <laughs> mostly, mostly, mostly bourbon. Bourbon, but I do, I do taste the vanilla in it. It's, it's on its way. Yeah. It, it's still a little burnt. It burns a little bit. It's so still, it's, it's, the it's bourbon is still there. So uh, there you go. So does the sous vide work, right, is the question. So our my initial response, and you can disagree, is there's no question that there's more vanilla uh, in the sous vide method after five days than there is in just the regular sit and wait method after six months. There's no question that the sous vide one is more vanilla than the six months of sitting and waiting on the shelf. Mm -hmm. are, are either of them done? They're not done. Not, not right away. Not right away. So we're going to follow Paul's instructions mm -hmm. on that he put together that they need to sit in the pantry for about three more months, okay, especially maybe, with maybe bourbon. Two. Try, try 60 days. Yep. And let's, we'll just continue doing these comparisons. So we're going to continue comparing the one we made in January to the sous vide and we'll do like an update next month so we can see where it's at. And if we can figure out that with the sous vide that clearly is expediting the extraction process, if we can get extract in three months instead of in one year with bourbon, 18 months, then it's a great method. Yeah. So more to come. Our conclusion would be definitely helped expedite the extraction process. Definitely tastes better than this one uh, at this point. Yeah. Definitely less booze and more vanilla. Still more booze and less vanilla. Um, we are really excited to see how they turn out. I want to try the vodka. Let's do it. Should we try that? Let's try it. Because and then we have a vodka that? one here that we put together as well, right? So let's see. And the reason we want to try the vodka is it's been a really long week. No. And we think no. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason we want to try the vodka is the bourbon is such a strong alcohol. If we try the vodka, let's, uh, well, it's a softer alcohol. Let's see if with the sous vide in a vodka, we got a better result. Okay, which one do we want to try? Let's see here. You know oh, what I think? Mocha cola. Oh, that's our mocha coca. Where's um, Carol's? Carol's that was, was a fortune. kettle. It was kettle one vodka. It was the kettle one vodka, and I don't see it. Is oh, is it the top one there? There it is. The maker's mark. Matic. Oh, here it is. We're going to use Carol's. Carol's like our good luck charm. She's the sweetie. She's the sweetest lady. We love Carol. Carol named this uh, extract after her mom. Her mom. Um, and so we love it. It's called Willa's Fortune. We made this one the same time we made the Maker's Mark uh, with Paul Gingrich. And so this one, again, is a little more than six months old. It's vodka in Madagascar. We're going to test it against a vodka Madagascar sous vide. Okay. So here we go. Do you want me to just pour? Yeah, Let just me put a little on the spoon. That's yeah. the easiest way to do it. Ooh. Whoop. Okay. Okay, so let's see if the sous vide with vodka works a little better than the sous vide with bourbon. This is so interesting. I wish this could actually be a real party and you were all in our kitchen and we could be trying this together. 
This would be so much fun. Okay. Okay. So I have the I have the Willis Fortune. You have Willis and I have sous vide. You have the sous vide. So you go ahead, taste the sous vide. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. I, I I don't know, maybe another month? That's pretty good. So Willis Fortune, definitely uh, less alcohol than the Maker's Mark with the Madagascar. So vodka is proving to be why vodka is such a favorite for extract making. It's just not as potent of a, of a spirit than as bourbon. That's not bad But either. it's really not bad. It's, Let me see if it's different. Wow, that's surprising. This one's a the sous vide is further along. It's further along. There's mm -hmm. no question. So the sous vide is further along than the vodka, uh, than the Willis Fortune that's six months without the sous vide. So it's further along, but it also has kind of a, a smoky uh, smell to it. Maybe it's the Kettle One vodka versus, or do we use Kettle One in the sous vide as well? Uh-huh. Or it wasn't, or was it the Svetka? It was Kettle mm -hmm. One? No, yep. Oh, yep. it was. Kettle. It was the Kettle One. Okay. Kettle One. Kettle One. Perfect. So it's a Kettle One versus a Kettle One. So the the Willis Fortune that we made in January, definitely not there yet. Still getting, in fact, kind of burns a little bit. Yeah, Whereas, yeah I don't know. I think you could try it another 30 days. Yeah. And it, it definitely be better longer, but yeah. uh, you may be able to so, try it. So we're gonna let those sit and we're gonna come back to them. We'll try them again. And let's see if we as a group here have found a way to get our extracts in less time than a year. There's no question the sous vide is helping it go faster, but after our 96 hours or 100 hours with it turning off, um, we're not there yet. We need to let it sit and sort of do its thing naturally mm -hmm. for another period of time. So we'll at least let it go for another month and then we'll try it then. Yeah, now somebody asked why we picked the 135 degrees um, temperature for um, the sous vide. And I think it's, we, we just want to stay well below um, a higher temperature for, um, just because of the alcohol. Well, and that was the recommendation that Paul had. Oh, uh -huh. Yep. And so all and, we're doing is following Paul's. And, well, uh, and if you read it, Paul, um, he says that he has done, you know, a lot of research and talked to a lot of people who have used the sous vide method. And, and that's the temperature that they uh, feel safe and have gone with. Yep. And so we're just, uh, that's the temperature that we used. And that's what we're trying. So great questions. Uh, we'll move it back. Yes. Think we can use the sous vide method, then put smaller bottles with beans and let it finish? Yes, I think that you can. I think you can just have a lot of fun. What we hope that we're showing you here is that we hope that your kitchen kind of turns into a vanilla extract making lab <laughs> and, and just have fun. Try and, lots of different things and, and see what kind of response it. you get and then post it. And the whole point of having a group like we have is to share best practices yep. and to learn how to do things better than we're currently doing. And yep. so this was, uh, we are one week into our sous vide, right? Or five yep. days. And we're sharing with you everything that we've learned in the last week. From and it Paul has been, Gingrich. and from Paul. Paul mm -hmm. was so good. Oh, Paul, 135 is a safe temp. Recommended from my research. Paul is here. He's here. Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. <laughs> That's the first comment we've seen. We knew that you were potentially away and you had some busy things today. And so it's glad to, we're glad to see you here, Paul. Welcome. We are. We and hope that we have represented you well uh, in our efforts to kind of duplicate mm -hmm. uh, your, your formula that we posted on our blog for the Gingrich method. So good. Good to see you, Paul, and thanks for chiming in with that answer. Um, we love Paul. Paul's uh, one of our longtime members. Yeah. Okay. So is that it? Did we answer all the questions? Uh, we did. The water, totally covering the bottle. I think we asked everything that came up on the blog. Okay. So if there are any additional questions, uh, feel free to let us know. Comment on the blog, and we'll try to answer those questions as well, or make posts and put questions in the group, and we'll do our best to answer all of them.